Hey, welcome back to Pine Sap. Today I wanted to just do kind of a life update and talk about where I see myself in five years, hopefully. So, I recently became single due to my own foolishness. Um, I made a mistake and I owned up to it, but I, uh, all I can do is become a better person and figure out what kind of path I want to forge going forward. I think this channel is providing me a great outlet to express myself and hopefully build upon the business that I am working on currently. The business that I'm making is an emergency preparedness one, or prepping, and I think with all of the things going on in the world, there will be a great need for it in the future. And now, honestly, um, depending on where you are in the world. My ultimate goal with the company is to help people get, help people attain the knowledge and tools they need to go off grid or stay inside and shelter in place. Um, just survival skills, things like that. I don't really believe that the modern world we've built up is built to last. If you look through history, society is cyclical. And I personally believe our current model of society is nearing an end point. Um, an economic model that is predicated upon perpetual growth that exists within a finite system is bound to collapse at some point. But I think the difference in the way I'm approaching this company compared to other preppers out there is that I don't intend to prey on people's fear. I listened to a book called Bunker by Bradley Garrett recently, and he referred to these types of businessmen as dread merchants. I don't intend to be a dread merchant. I will never claim to know the future. I'm simply observing indicators that exist um, and preparing for potential outcomes but I could be totally wrong and I admit that and I think that's something that a lot of people in the prepping community need to admit to is that no one can predict the future for all we know we could be heading towards what people could consider a utopia although the literal translation of that word is no place so I personally don't think it's likely but I think the great thing about the company that I'm making is that even if the things that I plan to prepare for don't come to pass I'll have gained essential skills for living in nature that I could pass down to my children or you know I tend to share them with others and they could pass them down to their children I think it's really important that as each generation passes we don't lose these survival skills as I mentioned society is cyclical that much has been proven time and time again so I believe the best way forward will to be in sustainable communities. I don't think these monolithic globalized societies are ideal 
for long-term sustainability. I personally think a reversion back to more of a Native American lifestyle with some modern amenities um, would work well. If you can generate your energy through solar panels, among other things, um, and not be burning fossil fuels, I think there is a real potential to make things work long term. The main problem lies in that the only way to really get people en masse to do this kind of thing is for the society to collapse. Um, it's a lot easier for a horse to keep running in one direction than to stop and turn around, metaphorically speaking. Um, so the trajectory we're on doesn't really seem to be possible to be averted. You can't really convince a room of ten people that one thing is true, let alone 8.2 billion. And that's not to say that all 8.2 billion are contributing to the problem. It's primarily first world countries and the countries that make all of the stuff that they ship to us. People like to blame China for emissions, but my question to them when they do that is, well, who's buying the stuff they make? It's the U.S. It's the, you know, the Western countries for the most part. So there are a lot of complex issues in this world. I just really want to kind of build a metaphorical form of Noah's Ark and hopefully give some people the best chance at surviving through some of these scenarios. I will say though, nuclear fallout is not something I intend to prepare for. Um, at the end of Bunker, they're going through Chernobyl and they have a radiation detector and this is towards the end of 2020 I think and they found a recently lit campfire the wood was so irradiated that the fire coming off was emitting as enough radiation to end the life of the person who was near it um, and that was however many years after Chernobyl actually happened so, also, they have to rebuild the structure on top of Chernobyl every 100 years for like the next 10,000 years. That's, that's pretty wild. So I don't really think it's worth preparing for that kind of scenario. Um, honestly, on my website, whenever it's done, I'm just going to put mutually assured destruction under that kind of scenario. I've got a lot of big plans for it, and I'm really excited as I've finally found something I'm passionate about. You know, I've, I've lived with anxiety and fear for the past decade over the things I can't control um, and the things I can't truly predict. Um, so this seems like a really great way for me to build some stability internally and externally. I'd like to get this channel to be more survival focused over time. I'm thinking in the spring I'm going to start going on camping trips and bringing my camera and recording my progress as I learn these skills. Um, I need to make it clear to everybody that I'm not an expert whenever I do these things and I'm just learning like them, but uh, I intend to become an expert and I intend to help as many people as I can. Life is such a wonderful gift, and there's so much beauty in the world, and there's so much good in so many people. I think it's really easy to get caught up in the negativity, especially when the media puts it in front of our face all of the time. And the main reason they do that is because fear sells, and that's evident um, based on what Bradley Garrett was talking about in Bunker with the Dread Merchants. People buy fear. Um, and I think that's unfortunate. I wish love would sell more. Um, but unfortunately, it's a lot more interesting to read about 
some catastrophe than it is to read about someone helping an old man cross the street. Um, but, like I was saying, it's a lot easier to focus on the negative things because they're pushed to us so often. A lot of people have a very negative connotation with police officers, but I would argue that there's a lot more good cops out there than there are bad cops. It's just the bad cops provide a lot of publicity for these departments and, you know, discredit the entire law enforcement field for some people. Um, but I will say a society without law enforcement would not be ideal. I don't think some people that really, you know, root for anarchy know exactly how it would play out. I don't think anyone really knows exactly how it would play out in the modern era. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to where this channel's headed. Um, I'm excited to bring you guys content on survival as I delve deeper into that field. I also make music, and I'm working on getting some music out uh, sometime next year. I just re-released my EP under the name Pine Sap. Uh, the EP is called 66 or 66, just the numbers. If you have any interest in checking that out, music isn't really my primary passion anymore, though. But it is a great outlet, so I'll continue to write and potentially release songs. Well, if you did listen to me uh, talk this whole time, I appreciate it. I thank you for taking the time to check out the channel. Uh, if you like the things I talked about or if you're interested in following me along my survival journey in the future, I do implore you to potentially subscribe if you'd like to. Um, I appreciate your time and I look forward to uh, providing you with more content going forward. Auf Wiedersehen.